Hello everybody, welcome back. Thanks for tuning in to another episode here in this series. My name is Dominic and I am the host of the Android Factory. Last few episodes we went ahead and finished our implementation here of paging. This entire list is completely endlessly scrollable. And specifically in the last episode we went ahead and added in these little headers here to go ahead and separate the different sections in our data here. Uh, so if you missed it, go ahead and check that out pretty nifty stuff to be able to inject some views inside of our page list. We also went ahead and connected an on-click listener. So if we select maybe a better looking guy here, Aqua Morty, we then go ahead and navigate to a new activity, passing in the ID and fetch the information accordingly for that particular character. At the moment, the screen is a little barren. So we're gonna go ahead and extend this screen over the following episodes. So I've gone ahead here and selected Morty Smith from the list. And behind me here is the documentation so that we can see exactly what happens when we fetch this character. So we can see a bunch of information here, all of which we have mapped to a network layer domain model. And we use some of this information to present this stuff on screen here, right? So we have a gender field that goes ahead and determines what icon we put here. We obviously have the image URL that we load here and a couple other pieces of information. However, there's something here, an episode array that basically has a list of strings and a bunch of different episodes. Now we're not doing anything with it on the screen here, but that's because at the moment, this screen only fetches a list of these particular strings here. So not really useful information. However, inside the documentation here, we can get a single episode and we can fetch this information here. So essentially we can convert each one of these different episode URLs here into the actual episode object that exists here. Now, in order to do so, we need to first fetch our character, and then we need to read the different episodes that exist inside of that array, and then we need to make API calls to actually fetch those individual episodes. So this will require us to not only change our modeling, but also upgrade our current logic when we fetch a particular character by their ID. So taking a look back here at the code, we have a function here, get character by ID, requires a character ID, and it returns a simple response of type get character by ID response. And so at this point, what's worth noting is the fact that this exists inside of our network package. Now that is not an accident. I actually went ahead and structured this accordingly. So you can see inside of our network package, we have a response package. And then here we have our different responses that we go ahead and get. And the reason that we do this, or the reason that I've gone ahead and structured it this way, is because this is the class that's going to define everything that we get back from the API. If we go ahead and take a look at the documentation, there's all of these different fields here. There's a location object, an origin object, and all of that is nested within here. So this entire class encapsulates the response we get from the endpoint. While that's good and well, it's not best practice to carry over this response model into your domain layer. And what I mean by that is if we go ahead and trace where this code is being called, so the get character by ID function is being invoked inside of our shared repository, which is just the repository for the app. But we can see here that when we call refresh character and pass in a particular character ID, we go ahead and invoke our repository to fetch that character. And then we post the information to a live data that's observed at our domain or at our view layer. As you can see here, the character by ID live data is a live data of type get character by ID response. So that means that where this is being observed, this response right here is actually a network layer response that's being used inside of our domain layers, inside of our epoxy controller, inside of our activities, and we're referencing the actual network response object inside of our code. As we can see here, we're making use of the character response name and gender status for all of this information to fuel this screen. Now, clearly the screen works, but it's not best practices. And we've also hit a roadblock because at this point, our character response object that we've referenced here inside of our epoxy controller doesn't have the notion of what the episodes actually are. It only has a list of episodes, episode URLs that we can used to fetch the actual information about each episode. So in order to accomplish what we want, we actually need to separate network layer from domain layer, and we can do so in the modeling aspect of things. So taking a look at our get character by ID response class, we can go ahead and generate a domain layer model 
that mimics exactly this. So we're going to go ahead and create a new package here inside of our project. That's just going to be called domain. Inside of here, we're going to go ahead and create the models package. I'm just going to quickly get rid of that so that we can see it. And then inside here, we're going to name this something that's a little bit more meaningful for uh, us at the domain layer, right? So this name get character by ID response isn't really all that friendly from a variable naming, class naming perspective. So we can very simply just name this a character. We will define it as a class and more specifically, we will actually define it as a data class. And once we split these here, we can have these two side by side to go ahead and very quickly just copy and paste this information here and now we have two classes that literally resemble one another outside of the name of that class. But if we take a look at our epoxy controller, the fields that we actually use here are just name, gender, status, the image, and then the origin, dot name, and the species. So we don't actually need this to be a one-to-one -one mapping. I was just doing it to kind of show you and be verbose. But essentially, we can trim down our domain layer to only the stuff that we actually need. So we don't need the created at timestamp. Uh, we'll keep the ID, obviously that's a good idea to keep. The name, the origin species, we don't need uh, a type, nor the URL. The URL is just like the URL for this particular character. Not really of use to us at the domain layer. So not a significant change here, but there is a change and now there is a little bit of a difference between the response model and the actual character model. Now, the other thing that we're going to go ahead and do here is this is what we started the episode talking about, the episode field, right? And at the moment, it is a list of strings. We can go ahead and in our domain model, we can actually enhance this. So if we build a data class here called episode, and let's at the very least give it a name uh, and an ID for now. I'm going to check if int is correct. Yeah. So the ID of an episode is an integer. The name is right here. Then we have something here called an air date. And then maybe this episode as well might be worth it as well. So we're going to go ahead and just keep air date and episode here. Just like so, we went ahead and created those two fields here. And now if we update our episode field here to be a list of episodes instead of strings, we will be required to create a list of these objects instead of just the strings that we get from the network. So with every network and domain layer model, or I guess pairing in this situation, we actually need to go ahead and create some kind of a mapper between the two so that we can simultaneously compress this data that we get back, right? We don't have all of the fields here in our domain model, but we do have the additional list of strings here of episodes being converted to actual objects. So there's a bit of manipulation that, that we need to take care of in some particular class. So opening up our package again here, the domain, we can create another package called mappers. And then in here, we're actually going to go ahead and create two of them. Now they can be objects because they're just basically going to have helper functions to convert one uh, object or, or, or one data structure to another. So we're going to call this the character uh, mapper. And then we're also going to create another one here called the episode mapper. So the idea behind these mappers is that they will have functions that will go ahead and take in information, network information, and spit out domain information. So I like to actually just name the function build from and then our data type here. So we're just going to say response, get character by ID response, and that is going to return a single character inside of our domain models package. Let me go ahead and just condense these down to one screen here so everybody uh, can see what's going on here. I don't really know what happened there. Android Studio freaked out. Uh, but essentially we need to generate a character from this network layer response. So we can go ahead and just return a character and inside of here, for now we are going to leave the episode episodes alone here. Uh, first of all, I want to rename that. Uh, so we're just going to name it uh, episode list. 
And instead, again, we are just going to leave that as an empty list because we are going to use the uh, episode mapper to take care of that for us. So we'll get to that in a little bit here. But then we can just go ahead and literally do our little mapping. So we have the response dot gender is going to be this gender. The ID is going to equal the response dot ID. And you kind of get the idea from here, right? So I might just skip over this. Okay, and there we have it. So we have gone ahead and just returned a character object here, and then we go ahead and use the ability to name our variables just to be a little bit more verbose here so that it doesn't just seem like a random uh, list of all these response.image, response.id, all that kind of stuff. So you can very easily see that we're setting the gender here to the response.gender, the origin here to the character.origin, and then we're referencing the object that exists inside of the response. So we can see very clearly how everything is being mapped here. And while this might seem a little trivial or a little redundant, it does provide a little bit of a layer between you and the back end, you as the front end developer and the back end, which has its own benefits, uh, in addition to the fact that you, know, you can change and manipulate the data along the way, right? So we've talked here about the episode whole thing and we're gonna to get to that likely in the next episode because we need to make a new network call for the additional episodes and whatnot. But you can see that the um, episodes that are gonna come in here are actually something that doesn't exist inside of this character by ID response, but it will exist inside of the character domain model that we are going to use inside of our view layer. So let's very easily just uh, connect this stuff up here. So if we take a look at our API client, we still need to return the same type here, except inside of our get character by ID is where this mapping is going to take place here. So instead of a get character by ID response, we are just going to return an actual domain model character here. Now we're going to have this issue because it's returning the wrong type. However, we can very easily make use of our character mapper dot build from the request dot body. If we really want to be verbose here we can very easily just call out exactly that. But now we need to modify some things up here. So we'll see here that the value is no longer what we're looking for. So we need to modify these to just be of type character, which I don't know why that came into play. And then finally, we need to go all the way up here and change things here to just say maybe instead of the character, we'll leave it at character, we'll rename this local variable to be character, and then here we will just update it to be character. I need to go inside this epoxy controller really quickly and just update that to be character and a specific domain model. And now all of our, well, let's just fix that. But now all of our things here are going to need a little bit of cleanup. So we're just gonna remove all of that and wonderful. Everything here seems to be working because everything was named the same and had a similar structure. They were at similar levels between the different uh, network or domain layer models. Uh, there wasn't a lot to shift around here, but sometimes there is. Uh, but otherwise, I think that's about it. So if we go ahead and run this really quickly, we should see the application working basically as it was before. There should be no difference to the user here. So we go ahead and fetch our information, and if we click on Morty Smith, we see here, you know, origin Earth, species human. Uh, this says human, it should say alive or not. So it looks like, yep, species is being declared as response.species, and status is being declared as response.species. So we can very easily see a little bit of an error there, error lied between the chair and the keyboard in that case. So I apologize, but otherwise, once we rerun it again, we can see just how simple uh, this update was and caught a little bug there. So definitely need to be careful, especially if these models get a little bit larger, they can get a little redundant or a little annoying to build and you can slip up and do something like that. Uh, which is just an honest mistake, but hopefully it's something that you can catch. Um, and that also, I guess, shows exactly the power of the mapping layer, right? You can kind of manipulate the data for better or for worse. Uh, in that example, it was for worse, but you can kind of see the whole thing in action there 
So in the next episode, we're going to go ahead and just continue this here. We're going to build out this episode list so that we can go ahead and get a list of domain layer episode objects inside of our character. And then I'm thinking like a horizontally scrolling carousel or something down here, or maybe underneath this uh, little header image and where we call out this uh, information here, we can go ahead and just show a list of the episodes they were in. And then maybe we built out an episode detail screen as well to go ahead and basically drill into the episode, get some more information about it and see what we can do there. So uh, this was an introduction to the idea of mapping network models to domain layer objects. And we are just going to continue expanding on this understanding in the next episode. So I will see you there. Thanks for watching. Appreciate a like if you made it this far in the video and I'll catch you in the next one. Thanks.